Hi, this is Juliana Kenny here at the Telecom Exchange in New York. I'm joined by Greg Huff, CTO of Business Development for Global Capacity. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you. So tell me about Global Capacity and what you guys do. Absolutely. Uh, so Global Capacity, through acquisition, has acquired uh, about $400 million of invested capital in the individual businesses that we put together. And about 13 years of operating experience in everything from type one optical services, or private network if you would, uh, to completely off net type three services as the industry defines them. Um, today, we're privately held uh, by Pivotal Equity Group out of Phoenix, and uh, really approach the market as an information and logistics business, uh, which is a bit different than most of our clients, uh, or most carriers out there. We really see the world from, the telecom world is a very fragmented, uh, very opaque world, even to those of us in it. Mm -hmm. Even in shows like this, where we're, we get together to talk about how can we interconnect, you would think at this point, we would all know each other. Right. And for sure we do, but as the market changes, how we interconnect and how we do business often changes along with it. And Global Capacity has leveraged the flexibility of a non-facilities-based vendor with the delivery of a facilities-based vendor to be able to respond to those changes in market rather rapidly Okay. Um, and to be able to do it in an automated fashion. Okay. Um, so what's new from you guys? Um, the newest is really One Marketplace. Uh, when the One Marketplace Exchange is an interconnected service where global capacity provides type two access loops to our clients. In fact, we just did a press release here at Telecom uh, Exchange uh, with a very large client of ours, Megapath, who is using two products of global capacity. Uh, the first is our information exchange. Mm -hmm. And in that product, we automate our, our carrier customers' rates for their access vendors. Okay. So if they have multiple contracts with multiple vendors to multiple central offices, to be able to quickly turn around a quote can still be difficult. Leveraging our systems, they do that today in under a minute SLA. Wow. Just recently, we've turned on our one marketplace exchange and interconnected mm -hmm. to the same customer, and we're providing a global capacity one marketplace access solution along with the automation. Uh, and very happy to say, taking orders on a very regular basis. <laughs> Good. Which is very odd if you think about um, a major tier one facilities-based client buying from a very facilities-like business. Yeah. And the reason, reason being is we really look at demand set in a much different way. Many carriers today look at their footprint and try to figure out how, to, how do they sell to the businesses that line their fiber access or the central offices that they're interconnected in. Mm -hmm. Global capacity takes a much larger macro view, but we look at it from a demand set. In other words, where do all the clients want to go? So we automate 150,000 quotes a month. That's an awful lot of demand. Mm -hmm. And that's everything from T1 access to gig ethernet services. Okay. And in looking at that, um, you really get a great picture of what's missing in the market. So because we have so many facilities-based carriers and clients, we can actually take principal position in creating access into markets that everyone seems to have difficulty with and just enable them to go there through a single interconnect with global capacity. When you say what's missing from the market, sure. what do you mean exactly? Great example. Uh, major tier one facility vendor, great client and partner of ours. Uh, um, we did an analysis of their network. And... Uh, it turned out that there were many places that we were very competitive. So when we looked at where we were competitive in Atlanta, for example, there was, I mean, they just had a built into Atlanta. It's a tier one market. They were built into COs. They're buying uni loops. They've got the best rates out there. And that's great. And we love that because we automate that and as part of one marketplace, interconnect with them and take that product to market mm -hmm. for them, if you would. But in tier three markets, like say a Memphis, Tennessee, or a Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, not so good. <laughs> so, and when we talked to the engineers, they're like, well, we don't have any demand in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Right. But when we looked at the data, there were 40 quotes in a week. Hmm. So when you think about that, that's the difference between an engineering view of where do I build network to maximize revenue versus a macro business view right. of how do I procure in order to service my client's need. And even then, building into Chattanooga, Tennessee may not make sense just for global capacity. But if I'm aggregating the multiple customers that I deal with, all of us together can build in. And because global capacity is a facilities-based operator, we can actually deliver that 
and what telecom sees as a standard delivery today. Okay, excellent. So um, in terms of talking about what's happening the rest of this year, you know, are you building any new relationships, particularly at this event? Uh, absolutely, we're always building new relationships because every relationship we build is both a buy and sell opportunity. Right. And driving a telecom exchange is great for us because we want to drive an efficiency in the market. And though a hundred different carriers here today can shake hands, meet each other and exchange information, then what happens? And that's really where the process starts to fall apart. Because mm -hmm. no one has a system associated with, okay, I got these rates, yeah. what do I do with them, right? So really our solution is to automate those rates. What do those rates mean to you? How do they interconnect with your network? So that when you, at a show like this, when you create the phenomenal relationships that you need to expand your network, um, that you can actually execute on it at the back end. Uh, and that we don't just start to stay on the hamster wheel of, we should really be doing business together. Because mm -hmm. I operated in that mode for a long time, waiting for a deal that fell into that carrier's footprint. Right. Like the person was great, just couldn't find the right opportunity. Against 150,000 quotes a month, we find the right opportunities pretty quickly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Wish you the best of luck. No problem. Thank you very much. Once again, I'm joined by Greg Huff from Global Capacity.